In June 2010, when the first tranche of material was released from Australia, um, Julian Assange approached us and asked us to be his lawyers um, because we knew that a, a storm of controversy would be created. And um, we then wrote to the Australian Federal Police back then in June um, last year and to the State Department in the US saying that uh, we acted for Julian, we knew that he would be a person of interest, and if they wanted to commence any dialogue then to communicate with us. Now, curiously, the State Department responded, but the Australian Federal Police remained passive until December uh, when he was arrested in the UK and when further controversy unfolded. Uh, so for that period um, we were acting for him, we continue to act for him as Australian-based lawyers uh, and we're aware that, for instance, he went back to um, Sweden in August to speak to a, a conference or a forum there. We knew of the events that unfolded immediately after that conference where allegations were made, then withdrawn. Uh, there was prevarication by the prosecutor's office in Sweden as to whether he might be charged with offences or not. Um, he remained there in, in communicado with, um, or sorry, in communication with the Swedish authorities. Went to the UK with their knowledge in November, December he gets arrested, and of course the events, as we all know, have unfolded since then. Um, bailed and now facing extradition on the 7th of February. Well, it seems to be incontrovertibly the case that um, some sort of offence has been committed, contrary to all UN protocols and conventions in terms of the intelligence gathering exercise that um, the Secretary of State of the US had initiated. Um, remarkably, um, re absolutely remarkably, there's been relatively little furor. I'm not aware of any um, individual prosecution, either by state or by any other institution or indeed by the UN against the, um, the US State Secretary. Um, and it might say something about the power that um, they wield over um, the UN generally. Um, and one thing that we've been really focused on is to say, um, in terms of the WikiLeaks debate, is we, we need to make sure we focus on what the mission statement of WikiLeaks is about. Truthfulness, transparency um, and accountability. And um, the best way, for instance, to undermine the institution is to in attack the messenger or the individuals. Um, and it's a ploy, it's a sophisticated ploy that every Western government engages in when they're under attack, particularly from a small institution like, like, like WikiLeaks. And so to make um, claims, whether they're capable of su substantiation or not, about sexual assault, for instance, um, that becomes a real distraction. That becomes the focus of Julian Assange not the important work that he's done over the last four years, exposing, for instance, instance in Australia, Kevin Rudd's claim that um, we might have to look at a military option against China um, if they don't become compliant in world trade discussions. Well, um, before I get obliterated by China, I want to know what my foreign minister is saying about those sorts of issues. Um, and if Kevin Rudd put that as a serious proposition, then he ought to be brought to account by the parliament by his own party, by the, by the opposition, and um, by the parliament itself. And yet um, that seems not to have occurred. He laughs the suggestion off, but um, it wasn't put in any jocular or joking way. The other thing that um, uh, WikiLeaks has revealed is the um, role of people like Michael Danby, who's an important figure in the Labor Party because he, his role um, really is a principal spokesperson for Israel. Um, is, an, is an important role for the state of Israel within the Australian government. He's their chief propagandist, so to speak, and I don't say that in a pejorative sense, but that's his role. He's going to the US, um, he's um, reporting on machinations within the Labor Party, and he has a very strong relationship, um, and one has to wonder about where his first loyalties lie. Are they to the people of Australia, or are they to some other foreign government, um, whether that be the US or whether that be Israel? And then there's Mark Abib, who um, is um, really blindly ambitious in terms of his own um, promotion and progression through the Labor Party. And he um, himself has been 
um, some people describe him as an informer, other people describe, describe him as acting in a, as in a treacherous and traitorous way. And again, um, the, um, what's occurred is that there's been an attempt to distract the Australian community from those very important issues. And I'll use this as an example. Um, on the 30th of November, um, Julie Gillard had initiated an inquiry within the Australian Federal Police as to whether um, WikiLeaks or Julian Assange had acted unlawfully. Six days later, on the 6th of December, she then comes out with Robert McClellan in their notorious comments saying that Julian Assange and WikiLeaks um, were, had acted both unlawfully and reprehensibly. On the 8th of December, two days later, and before, certainly before any um, finding uh, from the Australian Federal Police as to unlawfulness had occurred, she preempts preempts what they're about to say. But two days later, we get the exposure of Rudd and Danby and Abib, um, and um, that's distracted a bit because she's saying um, uh, WikiLeaks have acted unlawfully and Julian Assange has acted unlawfully and reprehensibly. So that becomes the main focus. Not on, two days later when the exposure takes place. And then of course on the 17th of December, the Australian Federal Police quite crit critically says um, there is no unlawful ac action. Um, he's not capable of being prosecuted. Um, and in that same time frame, we have the uh, Tea Party um, fanatics uh, of the US saying that um, Assange should be hunted down, executed, assassinated, being placed in Guantanamo Bay. Um, and that becomes another distraction because it's again focused on the messenger rather than what WikiLeaks um, as an institution is about. Uh, and um, the government, rather than, rather than say, he is one of our citizens, we will act to protect him to assure that he's afforded all his rights, that if there's a prosecution, there's a fair trial process, they remain silent. silent. Um, and really, um, if you want to talk about reprehensible behaviour, uh, then let's point the finger the other way and say that the government, in fact, has acted reprehensibly. Well, there's a provision under the Commonwealth Criminal Code that says that it's an offence to cause physical, serious physical harm or mental harm to an Australian citizen. It does not matter that the offence occurs outside of Australia and it does not matter that the persons who are accused or alleged to have perpetrated the offence are not Australian citizens. And so the, the legislation is so broad in its, in its scope, it was um, designed to capture people, for instance, in the Bali bombing type situation where Australian citizens were um, uh, killed and injured in that horrific uh, terrorist attack. Um, and so it would have given um, now the Australian authorities an opportunity to prosecute those people who perpetrated that crime. It's a provision that had never been invoked. Um, and because all of this so-called anti-terrorism legislation is so broad in its compass, we um, said to the Australian government, Julian Assange is an Australian citizen. There's been a terrible incitement to violence against him. It would cause any, any person serious psychological harm at a minimum. Um, and you ought to intervene and charge people overseas if in fact um, in, they continue to engage in that incitement to violence. Now, um, they've responded saying that having regard to the scarcity of resources in the Australian Federal Police's office, having regard to um, the level of criminality involved, having regard to um, uh, other factors, they would not initiate an investigation. Now that again is a remarkable thing because uh, you can imagine if uh, Mr Assange again was a US citizen, um, there would be uproar and there would be a demand that uh, people who are engaged in that incitement to violence would be prosecuted. But we sit back as a government, Australian government, and do nothing. Fortunately, um, whether uh, there, there's been um, some representations made to the uh, US counterparts, the, the, the sort of extremist violent rhetoric has, has um, di dissipated to some degree um, and maybe there's been messages behind closed doors. We know that um, uh, our claim that some action be taken against Sarah Palin and Mike Huckle Huckleby, who are serious politicians in the US, um, at one level. Uh, we know that um, things have now quietened down and we expect that something must have been said. 
but um, uh, I, I've sat back and I've been flabbergasted by the Australian government's just um, absence of any response to protect one of its citizens for a person who's not been charged with any offence where there's been a very um, serious investigation as to whether any offence has been committed um, and yet um, here he is in, in, under house arrest in the UK wearing an electronic um, bracelet. People say, for instance, that um, he's living a comfortable life in a manner in the UK, but he's, he's actually confined to a single room in the house for length, lengthy periods, so um, he doesn't um, have the free reign of the, the, the premises, as some people think. Uh, he's actually confined, so there's very serious um, curtailment of his liberty. Thank you.